o tēnā rau atu ki a koe te tuakana e Kain, ngā mihi a ki a koe i whakarite ai, me tō rōpū i whakarite ai i tēnei kaupapa matua i te haere nei. Nō reira, haere ana te wānanga, ara tēnā rā tātou kua tau mai ki tēnei kaupapa. Kia ora everyone, my name is Tuana Kuka, I'm one of the kaiārahi in Te Pautaka Wainga Unit at Tauranga City Council. My apologies, I, I don't do well with um, slideshows, so I don't even bother with preparing them. So I'm hoping that um, I can be a little bit entertaining and uh, we'll get through this kaupapa with, with you just looking at me and listening to me. Um, yeah, so I work for, for Tauranga City Council. Um, as mentioned in the Te Pautaka Wainga unit, which is a, a, a kaupapa uh, unit where we advise and hold the relationships between our council and, and, um, and our various iwi and hapu that we have within our, in, the, in the area of Tauranga. So, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of wānanga within my kōrero that I'll give, and probably the first one is just a snapshot of the setup that we've got at council. Uh, a snapshot of, of some of the stuff that we've got going on at Council and probably the opportunities uh, that are coming up in the future where, where Council's looking to support our local communities, iwi and hapu and other organisations where we partner up and try and do some stuff uh, in, in the local environment. So, does it sound alright? Kaupai, kaupai. Um, yeah, so... So I'm a, I'm a bit lucky uh, at, at Tauranga City Council. Our um, Te Pautaka Wainga unit has been established uh, for a long while now. I'm starting with um, my beautiful fire Auntie Meredina, uh, working alongside uh, Kieran Paiko, uh, who started off way back uh, when she arrived at, uh, in Tauranga, and then the team has just grown from there. So Te Pautaka Wainga, uh, inside Tauranga City Council, we, we manage the relationships between Council and Tauranga, uh, um, Tauranga Iwi, of which there were 17 Iwi and Hapu uh, within, within our city bounds. And, and uh, we're, we're lucky because a lot of our Iwi and Hapu are doing uh, major works, advising and, and fighting the various kaupapa that they have with regards to trying to help the environment as much as they can, as well as the wider community as well and the various groups uh, within them. So as I said, uh, 17 Iwi and Hapu, we've got 11 marae within our city uh, bounds, we've got 161,000 um, people as the population of, of Tauranga as it per our report last year. 22 to 23, uh, with an estimated population growth uh, at 2040 of 210,000 people. So the city is growing at uh, quite a, an exponential rate. So obviously with that, uh, there are these huge pressures uh, are on the whenua, which eventually have an impact on the moana. Um, and now our job is to, as a council, is probably the best tool that a community and a society has to try and lessen the impacts of, of human habitation on the whenua and impacts on the environment uh, is through not just the work that they do themselves on the ground, but as a community, the tools that we imp implement uh, as a society to try and reduce some of the effects that we have that just through the f pure effect of living so close together, driving your car, um, drinking your water out of your pipes. Um, so those are just some of the, the you know, some of the whakaro that, 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 uh, um, that we have impacts on, no matter. Just being living in a big city like this, there, there, there's, you can't get away that, that we have a huge impact on, on the whenua. And council has a has a huge role, probably the biggest role uh, out of any other of the organisations that that help to to um, try and regulate some of the human impacts that we have. So obviously, I'm hoping I'm not patronising you, but just to give you for like an idea of how uh, it all fits together. 
So Tauranga City eh, eh, and the, so the city and the district council, uh, we we uh, have a, a remit that we regulate certain human uh, community activities under. So under TCC uh, or, or the city and the district councils, we regulate uh, water. We ma manage and maintain the water infrastructure from the stormwater. Uh, to the to the water takes all the way to the wastewater discharges. So we've got three uh, major water treatment plants with, um, that the city uses to supply um, water to to Tauranga. Uh, we've got two wastewater discharges and our major uh, sorry two major wastewater treatment plants. Uh, one um, down at Chapel Street and one at Temanga and then the uh, discharge for both of those wastewater treatment plants is out at Te Manga there, out on the ocean side. We've got a, I think it's a one kilometre um, outfall pipe that discharges treated uh, wastewater effluent out into the ocean. And then um, given the city bounds, we have a huge catchment uh, and network of stormwater pipes uh, that, that we manage. And as part of that, um, uh, those those catchments are obviously consented and we manage those through catchment management plans which have been developed and are still being developed uh, as we speak working alongside mana whenua and our local community so that we try and reduce the effects making sure people aren't discharging into our stormwater network but they shouldn't and trying to maintain that system so that it captures and re and we get enough attenuation within that system that that um, the discharges to to our environment aren't too bad. So over the top of that, we have our um, regional council, a and that's I guess our, the way our RMA system is set up, so that we have these separations of, of authority, a and um, and then that so that uh, one group is answerable to another and that we can have proper regulation of those um, of those um, activities that, that both Regional Council and Tauranga City Council uh, manage. So that's the that's the kind of quick snapshot of, of what what we what we manage. Um, and kind of the opportunities or well, the things that we manage at the moment and we work from real high level uh, policy um, that's been implemented over the last couple of years. So we've had the commissioners uh, arrive at Tauranga City Council. Apologies, I, I work for Tauranga City Council, so um, a lot of my kōrero is Tauranga City uh, centric. Um, uh, when the commissioners arrived, um, they kind of came into a system that was that we had a lot of plans to do something in ver various areas, but it wasn't all connected up. So when they arrived, they uh, um, they worked, they implemented a program to try and gather up all those strategies that had been developed over the over the myriad of years, and try to eliminate the ones that were redundant, and refresh those ones that uh, needed refreshing, and then uh, plug the gaps. So this year we'll brought forward a, a, a new strategy called Tauranga Taurikura and as part of that we've got a bunch of uh, action and investment plans within that strategy that are trying to answer a different um, different focus. So if I take another step back, we'll start back at the vision that the, that the um, commissioners have brought in to try and tidy everything up. So we've put in a long-term planning document that works out to 2032 uh, or 2035, my apologies, I'll have to check myself on that one, uh, where it looks to um, implement some planning and investment out until 2035, I'm going to say. Um, then, obviously, as part of those planning cycles, we break it down again and we revisit that plan every 10 years and every three years. So that's the planning cycle that, that's undertaken to either bring in new projects uh, and make sure that they're funded um, so that we can get some stuff done. So uh, as part of that uh, vision, 
uh, to connect up all those various strategies that were floating around, uh, we implemented a um, kind of three main approaches, which were um, a te ao Māori approach, uh, a lens that we look at these strategies, um, uh, working beyond um, tauranga, so that we look at things regionally, and I'm scratching my mind for the last one, te ao Māori, uh, and sustainability, which is uh, a heavy um, impact on the environment or, or that we prioritise the environment and all the strategies that we look at. When we refresh them and then we let look at new ones, that, that we look to, um, that all the projects that, that we're looking at for Tauranga City Council uh, are looked at through those lenses. Do they, And those those approaches were to answer some of the, the, the pillars that were put forward by the community so that everything that we're doing it was put forward by the community to answer the stuff that they wanted to see within the city. And one that was that our, uh, our city was inclusive, that we prioritised the environment, and um, that there was social uh, and e economic um, opportunities for for the community so that we we had a uh, yeah a vibrant city that everyone could, could participate in um, so yeah on that so those are those are the three um, kind of approaches that we use to approach all um, all of our strategies that we're looking to bring together and then we had a um, kind of five major uh, strategies that we're looking. So they all weave together kind of like a net or, or, or a whāriki. I know that one gets overused, so I like to use the net analogy. So if you don't uh, approach um, or you don't weave your project with the net or you've got an aspect of those approaches that is missing from your project, then you're gon going to have a hole in your net and your fish is going to get away. That's the analogy uh, that I like to use. So we make sure that those three approaches are always covered, that, that we look at it through a sustainability lens, that we can't just look at tauranga uh, uh, in its own locality, we have to look beyond it a and try and work regionally, which us opens us up to working with whaka whanaungatanga, um, collaboratively in partnership with everyone, a and that... Uh, Someone please remind me what the last one was. Sustainability, uh, working beyond uh, tauranga and, and that it's approached uh, in a te ao, with a te ao Māori lens give, um, that gives significance to that, that partnership as well as um, you know a lot of the values that, that are exposed by tangata whenua are, are, are right in line with um, good kaitiaki tanga. A, a, and they're not just, you know, Māori values, they're, they're, they're New Zealand values, they're Aotearoa values that everyone looks to. So that's the, that's the framework that's been set up. And it's been set up so that, um, if you don't know, that the commissioners are leaving in, in, in July of this year. So the, the thought was to, OK, let's set something up and get our planning all organised so that um, even when we leave this job, Someone can step in and see what we've been doing and that work can carry on if the community wish it to. So just to plug in there, use your vote uh, uh, when, it, when it comes in um, June and July. I don't actually know if I'm allowed to say that as a council employee, but oh well, I've been recorded and I've said it. But yeah, um, but those are the... Um, that's the that's the fakaro around why that approach has been taken. So uh, uh, a, f uh, a framework has been in put in place, so that the work that, that the um, council is currently doing in terms of not just road cones, but the work that we do on the land to regulate our land use and make sure that we're doing what we're meant to be doing and improving and. Uh, what we do in our local parks and in our um, water infrastructure before our way makes it out into the environment so that we're not having 
So that's the kind of high level stuff that we've set up um, moving forward. There's a bunch of stuff that council um, uh, support and, and organise ourselves. So at the grassroots level, we obviously maintain the stormwater network. So we have a program where we, um, if we if we're talking about the catch pits, so we've identified it uh, areas where we have say high gross pollution into our stormwater networks. What I'm talking about is people chucking their pie wrapper out on the road. It rains and then eventually makes its way into the catch pit. The catch pits are all connected via their own pipes and eventually discharge into a local stream. So we've identified areas that might have high um, gross pollution, say by a school or uh, by a tuck shop that, that has a um, or by the refuse centre itself, uh, where, where a lot of that stuff. So we put a, in programs where we put an infrastructure that actually captures that before it makes its way out. There's also other places where we actually have to capture it at the discharge end. So I think um, in that dip down there, if you're heading towards Welcome Bay, the Welcome Bay area, there's a couple of major stormwater pipes there that we've actually put nets over, and those capture all the... Um, diffuse, or sorry, not diffuse, gross um, pollution that, that's captured on there. Yeah, it's pretty horrendous sometimes. Uh, yeah, you're getting about 500 kgs worth of, oh well, this is when it was first put in. But it, you imagine if those kind of um, uh, instalments went there, that all, all of that ends up in their, in their local environment. Uh, we also uh, support um, local community programs uh, and the volunteer work that they do. So we have a program where we work with schools and they do uh, estuary and stream cleanups. So there's um, council with a schedule where we've enga uh, we're engaging with local schools. They get a, a bunch of kids from 50 to 60 to all the way to 120 kids on, on, on some events where we get them uh, we organise a barbie and some uh, educational events and then we actually do a walk around one of the local environments, histories, beach lines and the kids will pick up uh, waste a and, um, a and then at the end we weigh it. You'd be amazed what these kids uh, find. For some reason Cody's cans, uh, 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 <laughs> we find them <laughs> everywhere. Cody's, for some reason, you fellas got to invest in some uh, um, pollution prevention. Uh, and and um, tyres and, and, ho and whole engine blocks have been found <laughs> in our local waterways just by the kids. Not that the kids pulled out the engine block, but yeah. Those are just some of the programs. So they'll go, ar uh, go around, collect it all up. Where they get to learn, you know, what's rubbish, what's going to the tip, and what's going to um, re recycling. A and then we weigh it up, and then it gives them an idea of of, um, of, of how much they've helped their, their local environment. So we use local schools to help um, clean their own lo local environment, as well as the, the myriad of other um, voluntary organisations, water, uh, Waterline uh, work with that we support, uh, I think it's Coast, uh, I won't attempt the name because I'll get it wrong, but yeah, one of our coastal cleanups, they, they, we actually uh, support them uh, in funding to, to do their own, um, uh, they, they implement their own programs that they do. Um, there's, there's probably the most community place that we work out. We do do diffuse pollution a, and monitoring where we install scientific instruments in our waterways so that they capture samples of water uh, from the stormwater um, system when it rains. They, that's a bit beyond me. Um, but yeah, it's captured and monitored a, and we monitor it in line with the criteria that's been set, a, set out in our, in our resource consents. So the minimum that we operate to is our, is our resource consents that have been given to us a, as, a, as a, um, a, a network manager, a, um, been given to us by, by regional council. And those are the minimums uh, that, that we try op and operate to. We don't all, we're not always successful. Sometimes it's, 
it's just too o overwhelming to try and um, keep our keep within some of those consent limits. Shouldn't say that. Um, but we don't operate to the minimum. We try and do a little bit more, and so yeah. Uh, in terms of other opportunities, so we've got funding grants available within council and, and, and probably more so within regional council, so we've got matching funds. So I guess it's just to say that we've got these opportunities that are already established that, that you can probably find with, with a click on a link on the appropriate page within our, on our website. But we're not so inflexible that if you have a programme that's operating um, that's in line with, with, our, with our values or those pillars and, and you want to do good within those community and they're within, well they don't actually have to be within the remit of Tauranga City Council but if they, if they, if they are to those, those values they're, they're, then you can either come in and talk to Te Pau or, or um, no doubt you have your own communication line into, your, uh, into Tauranga City Council and we're more than happy to support those. So yeah, it's just seeing if the values uh, the values line up and, and your and everything is organised, then then um, whether in kind or or in monetary terms, turning a city council are here to support you. Uh, in terms of uh, those strategies, and if you've um, the I guess the the, the long term plans are where the rubber hits the road. So we've just been through a process where a lot of those strategies, Tauranga Tauri Kura, um, a lot of the uh, engage community engagement, checking what the local community want to see, has been completed and the uh, uh, long-term plan has already been adopted, which means that we've got um, funding available in there and, and then it's been programmed into the next 10 years um, to try and realise some of the aspirations that our community has put out. Um, sometime, some of it we would have put in lots of money to see, to make available for community um, um, events or, or, or programs that you want to implement. So feel free to come, st come and have a kōrero if you've got something that you think lines up with my kōrero today and would be um, more than happy to carry that uh, discussion on and see if there's a way that uh, your local council could support you. Is there any questions? Sorry, I've just blabbed on, but that's my style. <laughs> Kia ora. Oh, definitely. So our job is to make sure that there's a seat at the table for local iwi and hapu. So the, the kind of apparatus that's been set up within council is that we obviously have the team and, and there's about 10 in the team with four kaiārahi. So all the kaiārahi, uh, all the relationship managers, we manage a, a patch, you see. So my patch is from uh, Mowal or through to Matapihi, through to uh, Te Manga. A and I look after the, uh, the, e or the hapu that are within that area. Um, and then we manage that, so it's there to provide advice for council engagement when they want, when they when they want to or, or need to engage with tangata whenua at the iwi and hapu level. In that, say they have a project in that area. Um, we also have a uh, kind of a, a collective forum called Te Rangapu that's made up of representatives from all 17 um, of those iwi and hapu and. Um, they they they're advised or they advise on two projects that cover the, the entirety of the city or large portions of the of the city or policy decisions at council where they need to advise into. And it's also a convenient way for council to, to update. Um, yeah. So all our iwi and hapu, they have their own um, policies, uh, sorry, they have engagement protocols. So they've actually um, told us how they want to be engaged and then through those protocols that they've signed on to with um, turning a City Council, it outlines their areas of interest, it provides a map 
for the for the the areas of authority, and then it, um, um, it's provided. Um, there's an addendum that's attached and updated annually that tells us who are their mandated representatives that can talk to um, council business. Um, and that's how Tauranga City is established. And it works works really well. Yeah, the, the, it's a nice structure um, to be able to talk to iwi and for iwi vice versa to talk about their aspirations or projects that they want to work alongside Tauranga City Council. So, yeah. And it's kind of given um, um, given really good effect with Te Pautaka Wainga being alongside that, so that they have our iwi and hapu have someone to come and talk to, ask questions, and then we can point them um, in the right direction. We also have the ability that we work across the whole organisation, and then we can plug into uh, any um, and all projects that that that, that we need to. So yeah, it's hugely yeah. It's great to have a big team within the organisation because we are relied upon heavily to because the the iwi trust that relationship. Um, just out of interest, what were the or some of the um, kind of like recurring themes of, of what the community was interested in in changing? Is that something that was? Oh, I cu I couldn't talk to it. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. But all I know is that the pillars. Um, that were kind of derived from that engagement work, that environment. That those are those are the main, the major themes that came out of that engagement work. Yeah. Uh, nothing that's working at the moment, but those discussions are, are being had. So I know that there have been programs that aren't actually being led by council, but but um, iwi and hapu have actually gone out uh, through through other organisations like um, Ministry for the Environment, where they have their own um, um, grants and, and resources, and um, and kind of. The city council has partnered into that to uh, work alongside that hapu that would answer a couple of questions around, um, you know, around the where council has influence. So it's a large scale catchment um, catchment management plan that it's actually been led by the hapu, um, and then there was an opportunity invited by the hapu to work alongside them for small aspect of that project where council had crossover with them so and there was some there's some resourcing and funding that have been provided not not as much as the uh, w what they've been funded to do on on their own but yeah where we find opportunities to collaborate a and partner uh, in those types of programs then yes we're definitely open open to those but those are discussions that are also being had in those in those programs as the opportunity to to say um, those monitoring opportunities for that could be taken over by iwi hapu the, the 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 kind of the thing that iwi hapu have to realize is that they have to be there so when it's time to monitor it is to make sure that that we are there um, to fulfill that work and, and that's it's hard nowadays because there's not that much of resourcing available for iwi hapu. So, yeah, we see we see that there's a bit of a, a gap there. But yeah, ngā, ngā mihi. <laughs>